Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you love Blender and you love free, you will love this video because we got a ton of add-ons that were just made available completely free for Blender users, as well as a completely new add-on that every single Blender user should add to their toolkit. And we're going to start with the new add-on. It is called Q Remeshify, and this is all about turning your triangles into quads. But the thing is, there's a lot of tools out there that do this. There aren't as many out there that do this incredibly well. So let's start with a hands-on demonstration, and of course we will start things off with a sacrifice. Goodbye, Q. All right, we're going to go ahead here and we will add a monkey to our scene like so. And now we're going to need to quantify our monkey here. So we're going to go over here, add a modifier to it. We will add a subdivision modifier. I'm not sure I like this new menuing system, to be honest. So we'll add uh, two iterations here. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and apply that. All right, so now we're going to triangulate our mesh once again here. Uh, triangulate right here and go ahead and apply that. So now we have a triangular mesh. Like so. Now what I'm going to use is QRemeshify to do this. You can download this. I'll show you the web page in just a second. Uh, grab the zip file, then come on in here using Blender 4.2. Go to your add-ons. Go here. Install from disk. Grab the zip, and then it'll be here, QRemeshify. Once you've got that installed, it'll be available via the end panel. By the way, it's only available in object mode, so let's get out of edit mode. But I want you to see right now, again, all triangle mesh. Let's go back here to object mode, like so, and now we're going to use the settings they suggest. So here you can see there is a ton of things you can configure on this one. What they recommend is turning off pre-processing. We've got to mirror this one, so we're going to mirror this along the x-axis for the remeshing. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and set the sharp threshold to 25, like so. Done. All right, so uh, no pre-processing, no pre-processing, -processing, uh, symmetry across X, and now do a remesh on it. It's going to go ahead and run. This can take some time. And now our triangular mesh is now back to quads. Boom. And it's clean. The, top the topology on this one uh, is very, very, very clean. So if you've been looking for a tool in Blender for turning triangulated meshes back to quad meshes, uh, this is probably the best option out there. And it looks like we may have gotten we got one weird end gone so far. That's all I can see. And actually, I don't even think that that's an end gone. I think it's just a weird angle. So other than that, yeah, that's the only weird artifact in the entire thing, and it's just an angle thing. So it does a super clean job of these things, uh, and this is a difficult task to do. Uh, so it is quite impressive just how good of a job it does with this. So that is Q Remeshify. Uh, just released a, um, again, completely free tool. Uh, you grab it over on Gumroad. Details are basically just come on here if you don't want to pay for it. Give us zero dollars. You want to tip, you can tip after the fact, uh, and then you basically download the zip. So uh, good quality quad topology, even with basic usage, support symmetry, guide edge flow with edge masks, uh, seams and sharp, uh, options for advanced fine tuning available, and no external programs need to be run. It does require Blender 4.2 or above, and Linux and Mac OS are still being tested right now. So you saw it on Windows, but it works very, very well on Windows. There is documentation available if you want to learn you know, more about what all the various different settings do. Uh, it is available here. Uh, so that is the new thing. We got a new uh, Q Remeshify uh, add on here. Again, I think pretty much if you're doing any modeling, probably one you want to add to your toolkit, especially if you're taking someone else's work and trying to like modify it after the fact. A nice quad based uh, edge flow really helps, and this tool makes it super easy. Now, on top of that, we also have Blenderies, I think. I have no idea how you would actually. Uh, pronounce this Blenderies, Blenderies, Blenderies or Blenderies. I'm not sure how he says his name, but you will see here uh, he has released all of his add-ons completely for free. Now, this is a weird nomenclature. Uh, do I say uh, add-on? Do I say, you know, geometry node? Is it a plug-in? I'm not really sure how you describe geometry node networks, uh, but I'm going to go with add-ons because that's essentially what they are. You could add them to a library and use them to your heart's content. So you see here, he's got a ton of different ones available here. He's got a cottage generator, an off-road rig generator for vehicles, smudge mask generator, uh, castle generator, uh, birds for background generator, electric line generator, tree generator, ivy generator, freeze generator, Generator, Christmas tree generator, a car paint shader, a melt generator, uh, untiling textures with normal correction, rain droplet simulator, and a weld shader, all available, again, completely free. Basically, just add it to your cart, say $0, and it is yours. You get an idea of what the weld shader is all about. So you can see 
the effects right there and creates that weld look a number of different options for how to set that so if you need to simulate welds uh, that is what that particular one does uh, now one thing you might notice is some of these are for older versions of blender for example the cottage uh, generator right now the walls don't work correctly so there might be some porting involved because geometry nodes are very much a work in progress things that have changed a lot over time but we're going to see a couple of them in action here's a perfectly straightforward one this is the tree generator so here you can see it creating aspen, juniper, pine, and spruce trees. You got controls over a variety of different settings. Height, you get the random seed to get completely different results there. You got wind, which you could obviously, you could animate that setting if you wished. Uh, and then you got radius for the trunk, and then a noise offset, and so on. And you also got uh, a wind op uh option in here as well. So each one of these, again, controlled by a different set of presets. So that is the one. You get an idea of what these networks actually look like. Here it is. So you could copy and paste this into your own project or set it up as a library or however you wish. So that is uh, the tree generator for the Aspen, for example. Uh, now let's go ahead and check out the next one. This is his paint shader. Uh, so you can see here it applied over on the surface here. And what it does, it, it, uh, it exposes things that you don't normally see, like for uh, automotive style paint, such as a pearlescent coat. So if we want to add some pearlescence to this, go ahead and do that there. We can also add matting. So I don't know if matte and pearlescent are compatible with each other. I don't really think they are. But if you need to create like that matte paint effect, uh, you can do that right here. So let's say you were making a car right there. You do a matte paint job right there, or again, a number of different settings for this particular uh, object. You can see details of it down here. So it's a Blenderies car paint. It does add those um, additional features again, things like uh, you got flaking, matte, uh, pearlescence, imperfections in the surface, and so on. So if you want to simulate the world of car paint, that is what this particular add-on was all about. And then the last one I'm going to illustrate is another generator. This one is for creating um, hydropoles. So the underlying thing, I believe, is a spline that is generating these hydropoles. And you can see here, poles. So we got that style of pole right now. I can switch that out to a variety of different poles including straight up to like industrial style lines. Uh, and again, they're following this original curve pattern underneath. You can control the spacing between them. Uh, you can randomly rotate them, which I don't think you'd want to do. Uh, you can do, again, wind. I don't know if wind's going to do much for these giants, but you can see what it does to the lines there and so on. So if you need to go ahead and create hydropoles, that is exactly what this particular blender does. Um, and again, you see the node network that went together to create it. Or you could just look at this as a way to more or less learn uh, geometry nodes a bit better because this guy is definitely very good at the geometry node stuff, something that I cannot say myself. So what he's done is released all of his stuff for free. Again, a nice collection of things going on here. Uh, and then the other thing that we talked about today is this, the QR Remeshify. By the way, this is an implementation of QuadWild with BiMDF Solver based off of QuadWild. So this is actually building off of an existing project. Uh, but again, a ton of free cool stuff for Blender users. Let me know what you think. Are you going to check any of these out? Again, do remember though, uh, with some of these, they may have broken over time. So especially the older things, uh, just because, again, the, they've done a lot of refactoring of geometry nodes. But again, there's some really cool stuff there. If, again, you're looking for something like a paint shader, we saw that in action. The weld shader was very, very cool. And then we've got those generators, like so the trees and the hydro lines. Definitely uh, useful things to add to your toolkit. Let me know what you think of today's stuff, of Blender in general, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.